And now for something completely machinima. Tracy Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered. Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice. This is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine. Use the machinima, Luke. Hello and welcome to a bonus episode of the and now completely what? <laughs> <laughs> And now completely for something machinima. Yeah, that's the, that's the one. You know what I mean. Anyway, we are here <laughs> to discuss a film that Phil has recently released. In fact, on the 17th of May, it's called Being Moses, a vintage story machinima tale by Z.S. Overman. Phil, your film. Tell us about it. Yeah, so Being Moses is a sort of a let's play but in character um that that kind of uh the let's player kind of gets lost there's multiple layers of character cuz i'm performing it in character but then he's role playing sort of playfully as if he's you know moses from the old testament uh but then kind of gets really absorbed in the role and so there's this yeah there's this weird weird layers of of meta happening and not all of it was planned it just kind of oh. uh it 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 kind of evolved that way as i wrote it uh, that wasn't the original intent was just a silly let's play uh with some you know some of my trademark uh religious sarcasm in it and uh but it ended up ended up turning into a little bit more than that so but that's that's the general premise is uh vintage story is a minecraft like survival sandbox pr uh procedurally generated game um it's got a little bit more complex crafting and survival systems than minecraft does that's what attracted it to me originally uh, i've been playing it for uh, i don't know eight or nine months now i guess and uh it's very enjoyable as a game and uh, yeah, there came a point where I thought it'd be fun to to do something with this. Uh, but the 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 filmmaking tools, well, there are no filmmaking tools for it. So uh -huh. the the you know the tools within the game are not enough to where you know I'm a little bit past having a talkie in a game that doesn't have lip sync. You know, I just don't want to do that. There's people who will do that and that's fine, but I just didn't want to do that. Uh, so I thought, well, if I'm going to do anything with the game like this, it needs to be, probably needs to be let's play in format. That gives me a little bit of artistic freedom for it to still look like a game, uh, deliberately so. So that's that's kind of the, the thinking that went into it. Um, it was yeah. originally planned for a 10 minute video and... <laughs> And yeah, when, when once I got to actually writing it, it, it uh, stretched out into something longer and incorporated some different music and stuff. So it was it was a lot of fun to make. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah. Well, I had a look at the game. I I had never even heard of this game because I was thinking, what 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 is vintage story referring to? Is that kind of the the Moses theme? But when I was looking at it, the game, as I understand it, is actually inspired by the Eldritch or horror themes, which is a um, a board game that draws on Lovecraft and depicts supernatural and kind of otherworldly entities and places and and events. The Eldritch, as I understand it, being a group of cosmic monsters created by Erebus to twist the bodies and mind of living organisms and distort all of reality of the physical universe and then i was thinking well actually i think you've probably you know you probably captured the essence of that in in this in this sort of um 
you know, I'd I'd say it's a let's play, but it's a parody of a let's play. Yeah. Play. Um, and you you kind of deliciously twisted all these things together, um, which which I think is brilliant. I mean, obviously you've you know the mine the Minecraft esque nature of it is. I mean that we we've seen. I mean we've seen some really clever Minecraft inspired films. I mean the one that comes to mind is that um, uh, we 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 reviewed one a few few months back, didn't we? Where which was by Squared Media, I think it was called. Um, about a, is that the is that the one that was made in Blender? Yeah. With, yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then we also took a brief look at one. That was a um, a portal, uh, you know, sort of a, a, a complete overview of Portal with right. mine with Minecraft characters, which which also was was really quite clever. So I think Minecraft is a really interesting way of, you know, presenting characters. Bizarrely, where you can still kind of develop the essence of the character without actually the detail of it, which is, I think, I think. Um, Fairly astonishing, to be honest. Um, but what you've, as I said, what you've pulled off here is a parody of Minecraft Let's Plays with contemporary news, with reference to old movies. And I, and when I was looking at it, I was thinking, well, you've got a bit of the old Ten Commandments in here. And because of the voice that you've, you've used to um, portray this character. It actually just sounds to me a little bit like James Stewart and how the West was won. You know, that kind of <laughs> farming. I have been complimented on my Jimmy Stewart impression. Yes. Well, you, you've you definitely got that in here as well, which I think that was, that was brilliant. And then is there a bit of a Noah story in here as well? You know, the bunny bashing sort of stuff that you, you, you do. And then you also kind of have this sort of, kids tv reference in there you know the the trumpet voices i can't even remember what the shows were that used to speak with with trumpets brilliant in the, in the way that they did it um and moreover what you you know even though you've got all these kind of hints of other things that i could see in it the thing that stands out the most of course is your unique humor um and your own, you know, because we, we, we've talked about this many times in in terms of some of the other works that you've done. Your own kind of relationship with with religion, all of that melded through this, which was which was really, you know, I thought it was very cleverly done, very entertaining. I must admit, I watched it more than once. <laughs> Probably on my third or fourth, fourth, I think now watching it, and it's just getting funnier each time I watch it. There's so many layers to it. Um, you said it, I, I guess, really, what, the, what I wanted to ask is when you when you do these kinds of works, what is the relationship for you between the script and the game that you've selected? Have you got a have you got a connection in terms of, you know, you sort of pick the game, you you enjoy the game and then the script comes to you. How do you do it? Well, I mean, this is that's hard to answer because this is this is the first time that I've done this particular kind of combo. Uh, this this, for lack of a better term, character that is the narrator in this um, evolved in the 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 fake uh, you know the tutorial videos, the master toots tutorial videos. I've never given him a name, and I don't intend to. He never says his name, um, but he's this strange mixture of like a dad joke wrapped in a, you know he doesn't know how much he doesn't know kind of person and yet he's still on the internet trying to teach people how to do things so <laughs> yeah. to me just the idea of that in this era of everybody's a freaking educator now right everybody's an expert telling you how to do everything and i thought well some of these people aren't. And then, right. and you know, then then you just lean into it with, okay, so full on parody. What if this guy's just a complete buffoon? He can't get, he can't get anything right. He messes up every detail almost <laughs> without exception. 
every historical reference or pop culture reference is wrong a little bit. And yet he just keeps blowing right through, just oblivious. And I thought, okay, that's there's some humor potential there. Um, there's some recurring jokes that this guy uh, that I incorporated into his routine. Um, one of them is uh, that's become my favorite part of playing that character. Really, is goodness years ago, twenty something years ago. Uh, I was I, I went to. Uh, to Disney, to Epcot Center with my parents. It was, it was some summer in between, you know, either in between years at university or afterwards or something, but we all just went there as grown-ups and enjoyed Epcot. And we were eating at this restaurant and right near it was a, a resort called the Polynesian Resort. And so I just turned to my mom and just says, do you know what Polynesian means? And she says, well, no. She, at, which my mom is a wordsmith. My mom is like, you don't want to play boggle with my mom. Like she will just kill you, you know? She, but I thought, I'll bet she doesn't know what Polynesian means. And the truth is, is I don't know either. <laughs> but I know what I'm going to say. And so I said, you know what Polynesian means? She says, no, I says, this means many nesians and she just <laughs> she did a spit take and that was born at that point i thought okay that's going in my little notebook that's that's funny that can you know that's a good joke i've kept a, a file for years on if i ever have the opportunity or get the guts to do stand up you know that that's where i'll i'll start start from with my material and that went into that file but it's just stuck with me and every once in a while i'll see a word with you know, some mono. With poly or mono or something on the front of it, some suffix and just think, OK, that could be, you know. <laughs> and so this character, of course, doesn't know anything. So he doesn't even mess up the hard words like no one knows that Polynesian means many islands, but that's what it means. But the reason that no one knows that is because Nisians isn't a word in our language. Right. But, you know, people know what monotheistic means. Um. So anyway, that's where that joke evolved from. So I, I just basically just as I'm writing, I, I look for opportunities for that. Um, and there's several other little just repeating things, you know, the slightly cutting off the edit of a word, you know, editing just a little too sloppily. There's just something funny about that if it's done right. Um, you know, it's starting off uh, with a lot of people don't know that. Like, you know, again, it's it's this guy who knows nothing, but here he's going to teach you about something. Right. And then and then what he states is demonstrably and obviously wrong. But he just keeps going, you know, so that's the premise. And I was using it for these tutorials um, as just a way to. Kind of exercise and get that get that character on a on a footing to where I, I knew how to how to work it, you know, it's like a marionette or something. And um, so, yeah, then after I did the tutorials, I thought, well, what do I do with that now? I've built this thing, this, this person that I think is funny. I've, you know, by the end of that series of all the tutorials and then the corrections and all that stuff, I thought, okay, I know how to be funny with this guy now. Now, what do I do? And the, the idea of more tutorials just didn't seem interesting. Um. And it's not a very wide audience for that, you know? I mean, how do you even... I, I can only imagine what a nightmare it would be if I tried to hire somebody to market my work. It's like, how do you market? Okay, this is a tutorial made by an idiot. It doesn't teach anyone anything useful. It gets everything important wrong. Sell that, you know? Well, but isn't that what TikTok is? Well, yeah, but they don't know it. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it on purpose, right? So, and, 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 you know, on TikTok, they can get away with that because they're, uh, they've got an existing fan base somewhere or they're really good looking or any other thing that I'm not. So it's like, okay, I don't know how to sell this. So I thought, well, then I'm just going to have fun with it in the way that I want to. And I, I thought, okay, a let's play would be interesting with this guy. And so that's, that's, the whole seed of the idea is just let's just think about some interesting games to do let's plays as 
And I watched a guy on YouTube. What is it? What is his name? Uh, Kevin. Uh, I can't remember his YouTube name now, but Kevin is his name. It's not Gray Still Plays. He's somebody else I've watched. Um. Oh, I can't remember the guy's name. Kevin. It. He's Irish. Uh, very uh, heavy Irish accent, I believe. Uh, if I know how to identify right. Anyway, he does let's plays that kind of lean in that direction. Um, and oh, there was one video that we reviewed on here, the one where Keanu Reeves uh, abducted the guy in The Sims. <laughs> yeah, and that he's kind of playing it as if he's a character, right? Because we talked about the character. The character is this psychopath. Yes, that's that's yes. burning ants with his magnifying glass. Oh, so that's gosh. that was. So that was an inspiration as well. And I thought, well, what if I took that general proposition, but really just fully committed to it of just, I'm going to do this let's play as a character, not as me, not as occasional jokes or shtick, but the whole thing is from that character's point of view, this idiot that I've built that gets everything wrong, that yada, 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 all these characteristics, and he's going to play a game. And what does he do there? Of course, he's going to tell other people how to do it, right? Because he thinks he knows what he's doing. And he's going to be wrong about everything. And so he will, for example, uh, put uh, uh, pit kilns to cook his pottery in his wooden home and then <laughs> leave them for the house to burn down. And anyone who's played the game will find that really funny, I think, because that'll really happen that really does happen like i did that to myself i rage quit after doing that uh because there is no it's 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 not a hardcore game if you die you come back but uh there's no restore from save unless you're specifically going out of your way to do that and i i played the game for hours and hours and hours and got a finally got a house and all this stuff and I went and lit a couple pit kilns indoors so the rain wouldn't put the water out. And it burned the whole house down because I hadn't learned at that point how to put out fire. <laughs> so it burned my whole house down, burned everything that I had collected, all the metals I had mined, all my tools, everything. <laughs> that really happened. So I thought, well, that's going in there. That's That's funny, you know? So... And I enhanced it with some effects, uh, some very poorly, kind of humorously badly executed effect overlays of fire and smoke and stuff. If you watch it real close, the motion tracking is like, I know how to do that better than that, but I wanted it to be Rough. just as inept as everything else this guy does, right? So I left it, I did it the, the way that I used to before I know how to do it right with DaVinci is I did it the way I did in Vegas, which was just you just manually try to keyframe it and it never works out right. Frank Fox and I used to to laugh about that all the time because he he did he did quite a bit of manual motion tracking in his film screen scenes. I don't know if you remember that. It was before Morning mm -hmm. Run Amok. And he did a bunch of effects where there was something else on the movie screen. And you could see it like jumping as the camera's moving. It's like not lining up <laughs> and stuff. Oh, he beat himself up about that so much, but I was like, oh, that's part of the charm. So anyway, Brilliant. so that was that was the notion is is to just so so you were asking about process, and basically it came down to I came up with that idea. That was the only idea is here's the idiot, you know, this is the character. And now I decide on the game and I decided, okay, this game has has the most promise, I think, to do something with. And so then it just took playing the game, which I'd already kind of been doing, but then I was playing it, but all the while looking at it with a totally different set of eyes. All right, all right, what what are some opportunities for uh, you know, things that will happen to him? Um and then the writing came. You know, then then I it starts with an outline, just a bullet list of the major events starts typically with three or four, you know, the major turning points of the story. What's going to happen? Okay. It's, and and I knew, okay, at some point he's going to, you know, get killed by a bear. 
Um, at some point he's going to burn his house down. And so there's, you know, and then, then I just flesh it out from there into finer detail on the list. And finally, I just actually write out the script. The script is completely written out. Like it's not, I don't, I don't improv that at all. Oh, um, wow. It's, wow. It's, it's all, it's written in screenplay form, basically. I don't think I use the actual format because it's just me, but uh, it's in a word document that word for word it's, and then I perform it. Okay. Um, and then I capture footage. So this is different from a lot of the, the order of events that when I'm making a film in iClone or something like that, or when I did the movie storm, uh, that's not the order of that things typically would go, but I don't capture a single bit of footage until it was already written and it was actually already performed like in the timing that I wanted, other than there may be some places where there would be extra space for something to happen when I'm not talking, but the cadence is all already there. And so then I put that on the timeline in the video editor with no video, just audio and start visualizing what needs to happen. Then there's kind of a, uh, what do they call it? Storyboard of sorts. I, I, I'm I'm a terrible drawer, so I don't typically do um, actual storyboards, but I'll do a I'll do a note taking version of a storyboard that because I can visualize it. Um, I'm really good drawer up in here. Uh, I just you know not not here. So yeah, so that's kind of the way it went. And then as it was going through that writing process. It was only when I got to the part of actually writing out the actual script, which I did in about a day, is I started to visualize something different for the end. I didn't exactly know how it would end. I kind of loosely thought he's going to be on this, this, you know, kind of vision quest and, you know, goes up to the mountain and thinks that he's found God, but then it's just a bear. And there's catastrophe and it won't end dark. He's not going to be, you know, a crumpled corpse on the bottom of a cliff, but he'll just kind of meander off at that point and that'll be it. But when I actually went to get writing it, I thought, oh, wait, this could be interesting as like a postlude. Uh, because I'd gone through that whole thing and only really given a taste of that Lovecraftian mode that the game will go into, which if you're, if you don't know that, that basically that end sequence with all the weird visuals and the Lovecraftian imagery of the gears and the monsters and all that, that is all in game. There's no post. Well, there's a little color correction, but that is all in game. That's a real event. It's called a temporal storm and it will happen in the game from time to time where you will, it's like another dimension is bleeding through and there's these creatures and weird visuals and it's very dangerous. Um, yeah, the game is really weird like that. So, uh, and I thought, well, I didn't really get to show any of that and I really wanted to, and to have him kind of be freaking out thinking it was the end of the world. That was ultimately how I was going to show that is he thinks it's the the foretold apocalypse right it's the book of revelations it's that's and i thought no what if what if he has like this old school and i mean really old school religious experience something that defies explanation something that when people study accounts of that nowadays they can't help but wonder were hallucinogens involved, you know, because ancient people experimented with that stuff big time, right? So when someone had this encounter with, you know, with the other, you know, was what was that? And and it's not repeatable, so it's not a science experiment. You can't repeat it, you can't make it happen again, and you can't, the person can't really ever describe what happened. I thought, what if I could somehow try to give him that? At the end of his rope, right? After all his efforts are done and his flippant approach to the stories and oh, I'm just role playing this this very serious prophet, this very highly revered prophet. I'm just flippantly just role playing him. And then, oh, I think I've found it. And it 
it ends up it's just nature and it's all a ruse and it's a disaster and then everything's taken away from him and so he's sleep deprived nutrition deprived he's essentially he's in the desert as so many apparently ancient people that seems to be where they what they did to go encounter god is go out and deprive themselves of moisture and nutrition and put themselves in the heat and then they have this experience right it's that's not just judeo christian religion that's all over the world there's accounts of things like that so i thought well, what if we brought that upon him except it's not a desert it's he's frozen he's starving he has everything that has been taken away from him, so he's emotionally breaking and we give him that experience and I thought that the advantage of the way that Vintage Story presents that Lovecraftian world is it's so weird and so nonspecific and so abstract that it'll leave it open to interpretation. That it doesn't have to be interpreted the way I just said, where this, that he came back and just having been broken by his own failure god confronts him right i don't know if you're you're probably not familiar with carl bart but the, the, the theologian early 20th century he talked about that god is historically god is is one who confronts us uh not not someone out there waiting to be found but he actually comes at you you know kind of you know maybe not even in a way that makes you certain that he's friendly you know but he comes for you so I thought, okay, let's play with that. And But at the same time, if we don't say anything, if we don't have him speak one more word after that experience, then somebody could watch it and think that he just had a nervous breakdown or that he was hallucinating or that it was aliens or that it was Lovecraft or whatever. And none of them would be wrong if I don't say anything. So that's why the, the ending ended the way that it did in this like Kubrick 2001 thing where it's like, what the F did we just see? And then it's over and you don't know what happened. You know, there's a baby above the earth and the what, you know, I, this isn't on that level, obviously I'm not that arrogant, but it just, that was, that was something to aim at is an ambiguous, a deliberately ambiguous ending that, was inspired by certain specific things, but wasn't insistent on on being a specific interpretation. That was important to me, even though this whole <coughs> the whole thing has a a tradition rooted in well, mostly Judaic uh, references. I think I didn't really reference anything New Testament at all. I don't think it was all Old Testament prophets. Uh, Moses, Jonah, like you said, Noah is alluded to, but never really, mm. I don't think, directly referenced. Um, and then, of course, Moses himself. With, there's references to parts of his story that my guy gets humorously wrong and or or just inappropriately oversimplifies. Uh, he killed a guy, you know. That's the true <laughs> reference, but it's like, you know, you don't <laughs> say it like that. Right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's. Uh... It's one of your more crazy films. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's really well done. Has, has a crazy element to it, <laughs> but this is more leaning into that. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. And part of me also wanted to see. <clears throat> can I do religious humor that religious people would enjoy too? Which means not being bitter in my approach to it, not being deliberately offensive. Uh, this is going to offend some people. Anybody, anybody who takes it real seriously will get offended, uh, but uh, it's not intended to offend. It's, it's not being wielded in that way. You know, I wanted to do that. And I think, you know, part of it is because uh, I'm changing. I'm evolving. 
in my in my attitudes and and opinions on this and i haven't lost my snark by any means and i've still got you know i still feel like somebody's got some some splaining to do that's kind of my my you know religious bent but uh yeah, I don't know. I've always thought that there's a lot of humor in in and around these ancient stories, uh, the Bible in particular. Uh, Bill Cosby, who nobody's even allowed to mention anymore, but he 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 did some routines that were just timeless and hysterical about uh, you know Adam and Eve and some of the you know these early mythical or or, or historical or whatever you want to interpret it characters. Uh, archetypal let's say um and yeah so uh yeah that was that was the intent is is it's it's kind of mixed right but uh yeah i i just had so much fun making it and and ended up it it, it won't be one of the most watched things that i've done but it's it's it may be one it may be one of the things i'm most proud of making because i think uh I don't know. Can I say this? That like what I commented on uh, the biz is film this month that it, it would what I appreciated about it and enjoyed about it was seeing somebody where their humor is firing on all cylinders, you know, where it's just it's working. And I feel like if it's not inappropriate for me to say this, I feel like in this my sense of humor, it just worked like it, it just everything just seemed to work it's it's exactly what i wanted to convey in terms of laughs and mood and honestly even if nobody but you and i laugh it's enough well, uh, i, I made i made I... this i made this movie for the same reason i make most of the stuff that i make and definitely for the reason that i make the music that i make it's because i make the music that i make because it's what i want to listen to and i can't find it and I, I make comedy like this because it makes me laugh. Like I was just, there was times when I was just in tears laughing at this. And it's nothing to do with ego. I feel like that the humor in this is in some way, it's found. You know, I found humor in this. I didn't create it so much as I found it and figured out how to frame it and prop it up. But it was there, you know, these, these funny things to be said about these things was there. And I just, I found it. Uh, I, think I guess I look at as it. a fellow creator, I get where you're coming from. It's not an ego thing. It shows you're emotionally invested in your film. If you're having the desired result as you're making it. And this one is obviously a comedy. There've been a couple of times where I've done some dramatic moments. I thought this is really hard to do because it's affecting me. Um, and so if it's not, a, like I said, it's not an ego thing. It's, it, you know, that you're putting everything into your creation to have the reaction that you hope to get uh, from watching it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, and, and it's not that I don't make stuff for an audience because obviously I do, or I would just be laboring away in a cabin somewhere and never, and people would find this after I died. Right. So it's not that I do want it to be seen, hmm. but I'm just not, I've, I've decided to not be emotionally dependent on whether or not lots of people see it. Right. I just can't handle that. You know, if I, if I evaluated what I'm doing based on that barometer, I would quit. I'd be so discouraged, but I, I do this because I love it. You know, I love that. If I were the only one that got to see this or me and one other person were the only ones that got to see this, because I would want to see at least one other person laugh, right? Which, thank you, Tracy. <laughs> thank you, Dean. Because the people that I, you know what's funny, I'll I'll just say that there's a couple people that aren't that have nothing to do with machinima that I'm close to that I thought sure this would really make them laugh. Yeah, I got nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I mean, I got, and it's all by text. So how do you rate it? But I really uh, thought that they would just 
go on and on or call out specific things that they found was funny. And they didn't like one of them just says, ah, oh, that's, that's funny. Hmm. That's it. That's it. That's all I got. And it's by text. So I didn't even get, I, I injected the tone into that. So it's like, damn it, you know, but again, I'm not doing this for them. Um, it was just something that, okay, if, if this makes my theology professor from college, who I'm still in touch with, he's retired. He's got a great sense of humor. I thought this would really, there's stuff in here that would really make him laugh. I can see him laughing. Um, but, you know, he lives in California. I live here. So I didn't get to see him watch it. Maybe it did make him laugh a lot. And he just decided to not be very verbose in his response. I don't know. But, you know, so anyway, yeah, uh, you know, it's it's a weird balance because you don't want to be just focused on yourself. It turns into like this solipsism type of thing, you know, where it's, I'm not going to sit around pretending I'm the only person that exists or anything like that. But I guess what just where I've personally come to with it is uh, that I know somewhere out there, there's somebody who laughs at the same stuff that I do. And it, it's not necessarily my responsibility to find them to actually locate them. But let's go ahead and make the thing. And uh, some of them are going to find it. You know, some of them already have. Some of them are already subscribers. And uh, and that's great. But once you make something, be it music or video, you make something, it's there then. You know, barring the, the great, you know, collapse of civilization, which we, we may all witness. But Barring that, it's going to be there, like going on, and someone will be able to find this in a year or ten years, hopefully. Five hundred well, years. Yeah, the, you know, uh, collapse of civilization happens. We have to do is write it down, and then five hundred <laughs> years, someone's going to find it and take it very seriously. Yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> this is gospel. This yeah. is what most. This is a true story about Moses. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and even better we could actually end up with a skibbity ricky response to it i <laughs> i i deleted i deleted generative ai ricky i'm sorry did you um yeah i just couldn't i couldn't take it anymore <laughs> I must admit, yeah. he was pretty um shocking he probably would have he probably would have really laughed at this Generative AI Ricky would have really laughed well, at this. I probably blew an opportunity there. But... I, I I think probably yeah. the real Ricky will laugh at this as well. Then yeah. listen, I've got just one. If I'm going to yeah, crit yeah. critique at all, I, the only thing I would really critique you on is, you know what, your description doesn't do it justice. Yeah, I I, I, don't I know how to do those. I think you need more to somehow to put a bit more into that. Um. And I know what you do, you know, I can see there's a deliberate strategy with what you're doing. But I, I think because of the way these platforms work, I definitely think you need more detail in it. A bit more detail in it. Now, you know, I do. I need to. I, 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 it's, it's you not need a, a bit of a story on it, really. Not, not, not my strong suit. Yeah. As, as decent, I think I am as a, as a writer when it comes to doing captions for this or social media stuff or whatever i just but man, you know i just you, clam up you know what you I don't could know what do to say. you yeah. could what you could you've got you said you got a script for this why don't you put it into chat gpt and say write me a social media post for this hmm. see what you come up with it's worth a try it could be absolute garbage but <laughs> <laughs> And it could actually so I, come out with something I'll just, totally I'll just unrelated. Sign it. I'll just sign it AI Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. we go. So I've got two questions as well for you, Phil. Yeah. Go First ahead. of all, what did that poor rabbit do to you? Oh, my God. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> that was a moment you can never recover from. You know that. Yeah. Yeah, that was the, it's like the stabbing moment in that wanderer. 
Yeah. To Leo. It's like, oh, he's not coming back from this. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll not look at you in the same light again. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the second question is, are we going to see more of this character? Not necessarily playing Moses, but in future videos. Yes. Okay. Ah. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I really I, like... I haven't, I haven't, I think I've settled on the next, the next one is going to be a Let's Play. I think I've settled on the game. It's a lesser, even lesser known game than this one. Oh. Um, but <clears throat> uh, haven't started uh, production on it yet. I've played the game enough to where, and, I, and I've got a general outline. So I, I, it's it's going through the same steps that this one did, but I've had some other other work and other other films that uh, that I'm wanting to uh, to get completed so but yes definitely probably good, before good. this year's over yeah there'll be one okay. more look forward to that yeah and the character is is something i yeah I'd, i'm looking for other opportunities to do something with that because i think there's there's something to it it's it's i don't know they tell you to find something that's 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 unique um and i don't i don't feel like that that character is a Certainly not a conscious ripoff of anything existing. Um, well, apart from the is... Ten Commandments, Carlton Heston, Charlton Heston, even. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I my plan is to keep him unnamed unless there's yeah some compelling reason not to. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I I think it's a you know it's a shtick. It's it's a it's a costume to put on. But um, it I don't know I I put a lot of work into to kind of getting smooth with that character and with that that style and uh yeah I, I i enjoy it i enjoy doing it so yeah we'll see more of him for sure it, it, there's such irony in the character i think he's he's brilliant he's he's you know what if you're not there's be a lot of folks that would look at at, at that character and not actually realize it's a complete parody Oh yeah, and that's and that's important. <laughs> I've been wondering if anyone's found those tutorials and taken them seriously. Yeah, and well, that's why right. Work. From some of the comments, I think uh, <laughs> some have. Yeah, especially <laughs> oh, uh, I did syndicate some of those tutorials as as like oh. uh, like I chopped up bits of them and just tried them out on like Instagram and TikTok and stuff. And yeah, on Instagram, some of the comments or on YouTube Shorts as well. Some of the comments were like, you know, uh, uh, what was it that he said? Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald didn't kill Abraham Lincoln. Are you serious? And I was just like, yes, yes. You know, it was something along those lines. Or Edgar Allan Poe didn't assassinate Lincoln or something. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I think on that, it, it's harder to maintain. You know, audience are, audiences are... are they want to be critical, really, more they're, than they, they want. Well, and they're and they're pretty they're pretty smart, you know. I mean, there's a lot of stupidity out there, but audiences are pretty smart, and they, they, they I think they know it's it's a shtick, but um, it's, it's close. It's one of those. It'd be a happy really... it'd be a happy accident if 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 anybody thought that it was real, because I think then they they welcome. You've just become part of the show. You are now part of the comedy. <laughs> You know, so I, I would welcome that. That'd be great. Yeah, brilliant. Well, yeah. Phil, it's been delightful speaking to you. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. This is a great film. If uh, if you haven't seen it, please do check it out. Called Being Moses. We'll put a link on the on the show notes. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, you've been listening to Tracy Harwood with Phil Rice and with Damien Valentine. <laughs>